The House of Mystery presents Inside Writing, the radio show where authors discuss their writing process in all genres. We are at the interview part of the show. Today we are talking special crimes, uh, memoirs of a DA investigator. And uh, that's a new book that's uh, just come out, and it's by the author Kenny Rogers, not the singer. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's not that. He's an actual uh, real-life detective here. So um, thank you for being on the show, Kenny. Sure. Hey, now, Kenny, um, maybe give your history before we get into the book. So w w explain what your career was and kind of uh, what you did well I was a uh, I, once I graduated from uh, Sam Houston State University uh, I was working at the time for the uh, Harris County Juvenile Probation Department and uh, I was hired uh, I was hired right after I got my degree uh, by the Harris County District Attorney's Office as an investigator in the uh, welfare fraud division which was a brand new division and uh that was in september uh of 1972 and then uh in uh may or march or may i think it was march of 1976 i transferred to the special crimes bureau which was a newly created uh division that uh was uh, opened by a grant from the federal government to investigate organized crime and serious uh, major crimes. And I transferred there and spent most of my career there. And I uh, worked my way from all the way up to the chief investigator in 1995. And I retired uh, in uh 2001 and then went back to the DA's office in uh, 2009 and stayed for three more years. And now I currently have a private investigator's license and I still, I still do investigations sometimes. How, how does something like that affect someone like you? Um, in the, in the fact that you started out, um, I guess I should ask that first. What, what drew you into being, into law enforcement from the beginning like what why did you want to have that type of a life uh when i was 10 years old uh my parents uh took me to washington dc and we toured the fbi uh building and uh i said i told my parents i said i'm going i want to be an fbi agent and i bought i bought the book uh the FBI story, and then I watched the movie with uh, James Stewart, uh, story of the FBI, and I'm like, man, that's, that's I said, uh, that's what I'm going to do, and I said that from the time I was ten years old and all the way through school. So uh, I knew I knew that I was going to be in law enforcement one way or another. Uh, I'm just i just I was lucky to get on with the uh, district attorney's office. And then number two, I was real lucky to be assigned to special crimes because at that particular time, it was kind of an honor. And uh, as young as I was, I was only 25 at the time. And uh, they, ca in fact, they uh, they called me the kid. And uh, and uh, the, the investigator that was supervising me called me the kid. He said, "Well, let's send the kid out there. Let's send the kid out there." <laughs> and so. Uh, it, it was uh, yeah, uh, it was a great job. I I, I miss it terribly. I, uh, I miss it terribly. Uh, I had some really really good times and some good friends. Yeah, well, uh, but so so when you were young and you saw you know the FBI and 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 all this and you wanted to be it, you obviously had a um, a very high image of policing and law enforcement and and. Um, almost glorified and stuff so you when you got into the policing and law enforcement um was it as you thought it was going to be oh uh, actually uh i thought it was better than i thought it would be as as, as a matter of fact 
I had I went to school with several friends. Uh, uh, I went to high school with several friends whose dad was an FBI agent, and uh, in fact, a, a, a couple of the sons became FBI agents. And, I, and uh, when I was in school, I went and talked to him about. I went and talked to their dad about you know uh, going to school at University of Houston and working as a clerk, and he said, "No, man, go go to school, get your get your degree." And uh, and actually, uh, and, and when I was in special crimes, I went over and applied for the FBI, <clears throat> and I, uh, I I was filling out the application, and I thought, I said, "Wait a second, I'm gonna if I get hired, and and then I'll." go to the police, uh, FBI Academy, and then when I, I get finished the training, they're going to send me to the, Detroit or Cleveland. I said, man, I love special crime. So I just left the application <laughs> and, and, and went back to my office, and and, uh, and this friend of mine's dad called me, and he said, hey, what happened to you? And I said, man, I'm I'm not going to Detroit. I'm staying here. <laughs> I said, thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> so, uh yeah, I, I, I loved it in Special Crimes. Yeah. Now, okay, so uh, now we get to the book. So wh- this is your first book, right? Yes. yes okay, so wh- what what was it that um, initiated this book? How did you get into doing this book, and, and what is it? Wh- what's it for? Like, why did you write this book? Oh, I... I I uh, would be sitting around either a, a, a restaurant or a bar and I'd be telling stories and people would say, Hey, you know, you need to write a book. So actually, uh, in January of, of 2012, I started writing this book and I wrote about six chapters and then I got to a, uh, I got to a chapter about a uh, a Texas Supreme Court judge that I investigated for almost a year, and it, it was it was uh, so it was so difficult uh, for me to do. I took a break from it. I took a five year break, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so March of last year, I contacted uh, Tom Kennedy, who's my editor, and uh, and I asked him. Uh, to meet me for lunch, and I talked to him about uh, helping me with the book, and he agreed. So, uh, man, I, it took me it took me four or five months, and I finished the book. And the, the the worst and the hardest part was the editing. Oh my God, the editing was the it, it was so hard to edit uh, that <laughs> even with two of us reading it. Uh, it was uh, it was di- very difficult, and then I I came up I came across an individual by the name of uh, George Weir W I E R. He he's written uh, he has written about thirty six books uh, of truth I mean of uh, fiction crime books of one character a, t- a retired Texas Ranger, and uh, I think his name is Bill Travis. But, but anyway. He was a friend of a of a of a lady that I helped. Uh, she she called me in 2000 and heard that I was an expert on the process of criminal justice from time of arrest to adjudication. So I met with her and explained it, explained how it worked, and uh, I contacted her and she gave me a, a George Weir's phone number and 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 he uh, he and I have become great friends and uh, our wives are good friends and. I've been to his house three times now, and uh, if it wasn't for him, uh, Kennedy and I would still be twiddling our thumbs trying to figure out how to edit this book. But uh, <laughs> he, 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 yeah, it, he's a he's an angel, man. Uh, yeah. Angel, I can't, I can't think. Great guy. Oh yeah, couldn't so, have done it without him. Yeah, I tell you, that's, I say that to people all the time. You need a good editor. Uh, that's that's how you get your book finished. I'll tell you. Oh, uh, no, I yeah. have to say that's yeah. true. Totally. Uh, so, some of the stories that you put in here, um, what stories did you put in? Like, wh- wh- how would you draw from all the years of, of of work and service you put into the law enforcement? How did you decide which ones you would include? Uh, because they were the most uh, interesting stories, and I mean, I got more. I I, I didn't want to make this thing a 
you know, too thick, uh, too many pages. I, I probably have enough stories for another book, but I think these were the most inter- interesting uh, stories. And some of these are known nationwide that I worked on, like Carla Faye Tucker, uh, 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 da, 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 da. and uh, there's a couple of stories that nobody's ever heard about because uh, the uh, the journey to death was a, 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 a very interesting story because I'm not so sure that I had the guy's real name because he never killed anybody in our jurisdiction, but he was living in our jurisdiction. And one of the, one of the kids that we suspected he killed in Peru, uh, who was from uh, Missouri, I was contacted by the dead boy's uh, mother, Back in uh, whatever, I'm trying to think of what year that was. Seventy, uh, it was seventy-eight, seventy-nine, uh, and uh, he ended up killing uh, uh, a gentleman from uh, Washington State up in uh, up in Alaska, and then he died in a. Uh, uh, he got charged in that murder, and uh, and he got uh, he went overseas and told him that he lost his uh, traveler's checks and he got some new checks issued. And when he came back, he put the stolen checks in the bank. So he got charged with uh, with bank fraud and he got arrested in uh, Webb County Jail in Laredo, Texas and died there uh, and died in jail. And uh, it, it's a very interesting story. And, and we really don't know how many people he possibly killed and we're not even sure if it, if it was if he u- was using his real name when he was in the houston area uh and and because he wasn't indicted in houston uh i kept most of the most of the files that uh that on these uh in these book, uh, chapters uh but since this guy had not been uh indicted uh, uh we didn't we i never i didn't i didn't have his file uh these other cases, most of these people were charged and convicted. But this guy, uh, I, I'm not so sure. Uh, it, it's it's a it's a good story, but uh, I'm just not so sure that's <laughs> what his real name was. Right, right. <laughs> and, and so, what was that that uh, one we're talking about here? Was that Carla Faye Tucker? What was the whole Carla Faye st- Tucker? Yeah, what was the whole story behind her? Oh, she was she. She'd been a prostitute since she was about ten years old, and she was a, she was on drugs. I mean, I'm, you, you name the drug, she was on it. And uh, she was angry with her ex boyfriend, and her ex boyfriend uh, had picked up a woman who was ha- had a fight with her husband. She was married, and she went home with this guy. Never cheated on her husband before. So Carla Faye and uh, one of her friends went over and uh, there was a pickaxe by the front door because the guy that she was dating uh, was a construction worker and he, he parked his motorcycle and his uh, tools in his house, in his apartment. So uh, they went in and I, I think it was like 30 something strokes to both, uh, both of them, both people. And then, uh, so we, uh, wire, one of the, uh, one of the, uh, her friends uh, was a guy by the name of uh, Danny Garrett, and uh, who was a co-defendant, and w- and was with her. And uh, he was t- he told he had a brother, and uh, I wired up his brother with a transmitter and a uh, Nagra recorder, and we were stationed outside the house. And when she said that uh, she came with every stroke the prosecutor who was listening said okay that's it we got enough and so we kicked in the doors and went in there must have been 10 people or more in her house i can't even remember how many people but but they were jumping out of the windows and but we we caught all of them but uh yeah and then danny garrett uh died in the uh, prison before he could be executed and then she was she was executed. Uh, I can't remember what year it was, but she uh, she apparently found uh, Jesus, 
And actually, uh, she was defended by one of our uh, former uh, prosecutors and a former district judge and a former U.S. attorney in the in the uh, Southern District of Texas, and he became a big defender of hers because she had found God in the in a uh, 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 governor uh, uh, Governor Bush, uh, George W., signed the order to go ahead with the execution, and she was executed. Wow. And and so, and what about the Black Widow? It said so you you did that case. Yeah, I did that case, and uh, that's our first that's our first chapter. As a matter of fact, uh, me and Gary Taylor and a prosecutor. Uh, and a private investigator, uh, we flew to uh, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, in 2017 and filmed a TV show called uh, Your Worst Nightmare, the Black Widow episode. Uh, it, it, it comes on every once in a while, but, uh, yeah, that was kind of fun. And then uh, uh, Gary Tate, we still, I still stay in touch with Gary, and uh, Gary found out about uh, these, this stir that she was causing in this neighborhood with the senior citizens. And so we that's the last chapter we wrote about stuff that's going on right now today. Uh, and so her case is, her criminal case is still pending. And and then uh, there's a civil case. She, she, uh, she filed a lawsuit against the elderly man uh, and, and he was financing the house for her and then she she uh she forged some documents and lied about it. So there's a civil suit, and I I heard the other day that the case got reset on that too. So it that that that's kind of, that's kind of a case that's still going on with her. So and, uh, how did how did she do like kind of how did she do her thing? She would she would meet people and then uh, kill them for money. No, no. No. She would get mad. Uh, well, I tell you what, she was a she was a, an intern, a law school intern working in the grand jury when she was going to law school, and she got in a fight with him, and she took his uh, all his law books and his uh, notes that he'd taken and put them in a trash can in the garage apartment and set them on fire and then stole his car and, and it damaged the uh, garage apartment. Of course, she got fired, and then uh, uh, when we investigated her, we found out that she had her first husband was in the United States Navy over in the Philippines, and he re he reenlisted and uh, to stay away from him because she apparently had shot at him with a pistol, and uh, be, be, uh, the before that she shot Gary Taylor, she had a boyfriend that was with the Houston Police Department, and he taught her how to shoot a gun. And uh, she, what she would do, uh, she buried this doctor, Dr. Doc, Dr. T- George Tedesco, and uh, he, he, I don't know, took, he wasn't married to her too long, but uh, he filed for divorce, and he, did, he never showed up in court, and police went to his house, and they found he beat beat to death with a leg of a table, take a table leg. She sounds like, and, and, and yeah, <laughs> we, we think that what she would do, what she would do is she had a guy, uh, uh, Tommy, Tommy Bell was his name and she had represented him and he didn't have money. So in, in, in exchange of, he, he would, she would get him to do favors, uh, to, to beat somebody up or kill somebody. And, uh, she, uh, uh, you know, she was, uh, we got involved when Dr. Tedesco got killed and, uh, uh, and then when, when, uh, we warned Taylor about it and then, uh, uh, she ended up going to Dallas and, and, uh, she had a, uh, a paralegal and she, and, uh, and she, she was cheating, uh, 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 people out of money, and uh, she was fixing to turn her in. This paralegal, 
So her and her husband went up, went to their house during Christmas, and uh, uh, they killed uh, they killed her husband and shot the paralegal's arm off. And yes. and uh, he 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 pled guilty. He was a he was a constable at the time, and he he's still in prison, and he won't give her up. And uh, and the the woman who's lost her arm said she. They were wearing masks, and she said that she recognized her voice, but they said that, I guess, the Dallas DA's office didn't think that was enough. So then she, then she went, went to uh, north of Dallas to, uh, oh, man, it's where North Texas State is. I can't think of the name of the town. Uh, anyway, she, uh, she scared a polygraph. She was dating a polygraph operator, a guy that used to be a, a policeman, and he got. He was so afraid of her. He 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 filed a uh, protective order against her, and and then uh, she eventually uh, got arrested in Dallas a few times. But the, th- the thing is, she's never been to prison. And, and and my editor and I were trying to and and Gary Taylor, we were trying to add up how many people she's responsible, and we were thinking of, of about eight people that she's re- responsible for their death. Wow. You know, we can't prove any of it, but. And, and, and she's never been in jail, really. Yeah, she's she'll get bonded out. She's never she never spent over probably a night or two in jail. Does she yeah. know? Does she know where you live? Probably. <laughs> oh, she loves it. She loves the she loves the publicity though. She it, it doesn't bother her. She loves my book. <laughs> she, she, I'm telling you. She, I'm, I'm more worried about other people knowing where I live that are in this book, <laughs> <laughs> like, like like the king of harassment. Uh, so who's that? Who who's who's more your most fear, feared person? Well, this guy won't do anything to your face. I'm not scared of any of them. I mean, I, yeah. It, but he's a sneaky. He's a guy that sneaks around in the dark of the night. He harassed he harassed women so bad. Three of them tried to commit suicide. He, dangerous, dangerous guy. Well, how dangerous could, guy. How how would you harass someone so bad that they'd want to kill themselves? Oh, uh, well, you, you have to read the chapter. <laughs> I, it, I can't. It, it, it like, like throwing uh, bricks through your window, super glue in your door locks, water in your gas tank. Uh, Breaking in, coming in your house, stealing your keys, uh, sending you gifts, uh, stealing your mail, stealing your checks out of the mail, writing checks to your uh, this, this, the the main girl. Uh, how I start got involved. He was uh, he was dating this beautiful little flight attendant, and he he would uh, he would uh, he would get her mail, and he and he called the bank and ordered new checks. And uh, and then she owed the phone company like uh, twenty five dollars. Well, he'd write a check for three three hundred dollars, and she ended up bouncing a bunch of checks and got credit cards in her name. And oh my god, and her friends and it, he was he's a he. It, you can look. I, I don't know how women could even date him. And you look at him in the face. He's like this. He's got this scary look. He's got this scary look. And uh, we, it, 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 the, the stuff he would do to people, just the, yeah. Hey, one woman tried to kill herself, and she ended up moving back in with him. No. Oh. Tell me how that happens. Well, well, what was it? Well, first, what was it about him that he could try, you know, have someone try to kill himself and then move back in with you? And and uh, what uh, was it? What was the point of him doing what he was doing to these people? Like what was he? What was he? Oh, he, just, he, he, he would terrorize them. He, like he used this little girl, uh, Dora Santa Maria, to the point where uh, what what happened was that uh, I got a. We did a handwriting uh, ex, a, a exemplar from from uh, uh, from her. And we could prove that she had doc- that she had signed some of the uh, 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 at change of addresses with the post office. So uh, we we finally told him he was in our office. Yeah, he showed we, he was supposed to do an exemplar, but 
he showed up with a cast on his writing hand, said that his house had been burglarized that night, which was a lie. <laughs> yeah. And so we just told him to leave. And finally, when he left, she broke down and told us that he, he if she didn't cooperate with him and, t- and, and talk to us, that he was going to de- hurt, her, hurt her family. So we got enough information from her to get a search warrant. And she had stolen uh, this flight attendant's all of her uniforms. And, and uh, we followed him to his house when, when he left it, left our office. And we got a search warrant, and then we caught him at a uh, a uh, one of these a place where you donate clothes, uh, Goodwill box. And so we arrested him before he could dump her uniforms, and we got a search warrant, got got the uniforms, and went to his house, and and he filed all, he filed a he said he lost, he had a his Rolex was stolen, uh, all the Rolex that were allegedly stolen were all in his safe. Yeah, the guys, and and you got to realize his mother was very wealthy, and she was married to a uh, to a gentleman who was an attorney, uh, which was his stepdad, and he was a former U.S. attorney and a and a pretty uh, well known attorney in Houston. So he he didn't his his so called job was he was a private investigator, and he'd hang out at the courthouse and take pictures of all the women attorneys. That was. Guys got a screw loose. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd yeah. say. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's just strange. Did he just pick people at random, or was there a particular reason he picked them? No, it was usually, uh, well, I'll tell you what, he was, uh, so when I, when I searched his safe, he had a picture of our of one of our female assistant DAs. And so I, I went to her and I said, hey, what's the deal with this picture? And she said, I, I, I've gone out with him. I said, I, I said, are you crazy? How, why would you go out with this guy's a, a insane man? Are you kidding me? I, I put her name in the book, and I, I, I feel sorry for her, but at the same time, how would you, how would you take some nutcase like this? That's what I, I asked. You know, like... I, I, I don't know, but most of it, most of it was because they were so terrified of him, and he and. Uh, in fact, one of his former girlfriends, uh, I met with her. I met with a lot of his former girlfriends after we charged him, and she brought me this book that he had, and it was it was called Techniques of Harassment. And dude, he followed it to the T. He followed it to the T, and he was a he. He's a they, he was a. a, a I don't know. He, he's the, he's one of the best. That's why I call it the king of harassment. Wow. <laughs> and and, and yeah. she, so he was just harassing for the fact of harassing. Like he he just wanted well, to do well, it. Well, what would happen? They would they would go out. They would go out on maybe one day or two dates, and they're like, "Oh, this guy's a weirdo." And so when he, when they would break up with him, he'd start harassing, harassing them. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, uh, well, wow. you know, <laughs> and so is he in jail now or is he out? Oh, he, he got 10 years probation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, what's funny, this is what's odd about it. He was, he, he went, when I, when I arrested him, he was carrying a badge from a, as a reserve deputy for the constable's office. I called the constable. I said, I'm fixing to arrest your deputy here. Because back in those days, you, they just give you a badge, you know. And and he was the, apparently a, an instructor uh, at this constable's office for judo and self defense and stuff. But, uh, yeah, it, yeah. He, he well, I, I tell you what, uh, the the prosecutor, the prosecutor. This is going to sound funny. So the prosecutor. The prosecutor. We, the first trial ended, ended ended in a mistrial because the the jury the uh, jury convinced them that the complaining witness was uh, was my girlfriend, which was not even close to being true. And in the second case, they found him guilty, and he got ten years probation. And the the guy that prosecuted the case ended up hiring him as an investigator when he went into private practice. I said, I called him. I said, are you crazy? 
And I was like, are you crazy? And what's funny is when I, when I, uh, he'd been arrested on, for GWI in a bunch of cases, but all, all of, all of his, uh, all of his uh, mug shots, uh, are gone. There's no pictures of him. I couldn't, even, I, I, I didn't have his mug shot. So I, I did an open records request and that, there's no pictures of him. <laughs> I was like, what? What's this guy? Well, he was friends with the, with the city attorney. And that, that's, they try class, uh, three misdemeanors, class C, you know, traffic tickets and stuff. And yeah, he went, he went uh, on a skiing trip with this, uh, city attorney. And while he was in, in, uh, in, in, uh, Bay of Colorado and, and, uh, there was this, uh, uh, there was a truck where they stayed and he stole the license plate. And so when I was search, when I w- went through the search warrant in his state, there was this Louisiana license plate. So I, I, I called the guy that the truck was registered to in Louisiana and he said, Oh my God, that's on my truck in Vail. And I said, Well, it was. He said, Well, where, where's my truck? And I said, Your truck is probably still there, but I got the license plate. He stole, he, so he was with the city attorney and stole the license plate while he was in Colorado. Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting chapter. Uh, that that could be a very good. Uh, that could be a, a, a movie about this guy. I mean, <laughs> man, he harassed a lot of women, man. Wow, wow. crazy! Um, wow. So now you talk about some uh, moments with gun, gun misfires and and uh, some something a little bit more uh, fun or hilarious. Um, give us a few samples of what you mean by that. Okay, uh, let me see. What was that? Uh, oh, well, it wasn't really. Uh, admit, I, well, what happened was uh, I, we went out to. Uh, uh, oh, <laughs> it's kind of a funny story, but it, it, it's serious. Uh, a, a lot of uh, on a lot of Fridays, the burglary and theft division, of the Houston Police Department. Uh, a lot of guys take off, so. Uh, this uh, guy came over from uh, cons. I don't know if he have cons uh, appliances where you live, uh, but uh, so uh, I'd met the Houston guy, the uh, con security rep, and uh, I recovered a stove for him on a Friday. So apparently he and a uh, he and about eight other vendors uh, that that uh, rent furniture and rent different things. Uh, had got nailed by these two guys that, uh, had stolen, uh, uh, this is, this is before you heard of identity theft. Th- these guys were, uh, janitors for some cleaning service and they cleaned, uh, 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 it was called Gulf Oil back then. They cleaned Gulf Oil's offices and they, and they got a bunch of different copies of applications of, uh, their employees. And these two guys went and, and rented, uh, Two houses and furniture and all kind of stuff in the same neighborhood. So one Friday they show up, all these vendors show up, and I grab a, I grab a a, a, a couple of investigators, I guess four, four or three other investigators, and so we go out to the house, and I didn't want to kick the door in because uh, because uh, he didn't he didn't own the house, and I didn't want to do any damage. So uh, we walked around the house, and there was a chair underneath a window that was a it was a little higher than a, a normal window. So I said, so uh, I got in the chair and I, I I raised the window and I said, "Police, I'm coming in." And I stuck my leg in, and when I did, man, a shotgun missed my head by inches, and it blew me out of the window, broke my glasses, and. Uh, so uh, we, we, of course, we knew he was in there. So we, we, it took us a while to get him out, but so we got him out. And then the, his partner, uh, uh, I waited till Monday, and I took a, a buddy of mine. And then this guy was supposed to have a gun. So uh, I said, I said, screw this, I'm kicking the door in. So I kicked the door, and I bounced off. And when I did, I came flying back ripped the crotch out of my pants. And uh, <laughs> so anyway, I, we finally got in, and, and my, my partner was with me, 
I told him to search the bedroom that I was going to, I was going to check the hall closet. So the second door I opened, I saw four eyes and man, it scared the, you know what out of me, man. I was hard, I was sweating like a pig and it turned out it was his granddaughter and his daughter. Oh man. And so I asked her where her dad was and she pointed to the attic. And so, uh, uh, I, w- I pulled the stairs down and I, I, I went up and I said, Hey, uh, you need to come out with your hands up and he didn't come out. And, uh, so I went out to my, to my uh, car and I got a, I had a law enforcement, uh, shotgun and I, I walked up the stairs and I jacked one in the chamber and I said, okay, man, I'm going downstairs and I'm going to start blowing holes in the ceiling. He came flying, jumping up with his hands up. He was in his underwear. And he was covered with that insulation. <laughs> and he itched all the way to jail. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, uh, anyway, and then we had a, uh, another series. Well, this was, uh, it's called Gun Smoke, another Friday Gun Smoke. And, uh, that was in a, a shootout. And one of our, uh, investigators got shot in the foot. And that was pretty, uh, that, in fact, that's the cover. That cover on the, the cover of the book is, uh, is where the money, we had $50,000 in cash. They, uh, these, uh, guys had, had kidnapped, uh, one of these guys because they didn't pay him for the, some marijuana. So we were doing the exchange and, and, uh, when we went to arrest the guys, they started shooting at us. And so we shot back and, uh, one of their guys got killed and one of our, uh, investigators got wounded. And that, that was it. But, uh, uh, yeah. Th- oh, uh, uh, you're probably talking about, uh, when, uh, when <laughs> we were at the steak and ale and, uh, somebody, we used to ha- have hump night, uh, there's a chapter called hump night. And it's, uh, uh, one night, uh, there, a lot of courthouse, uh, deputies, investigators, and assistant DAs and judges would hang out on Wednesday night there. So there was a deputy selling the gun. So the guy said, well, I'm going to test fire it. Well, there's a dumpster out back. Well, unbeknownst to us, there was a, 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 a the guy that washes dishes was smoking a cigarette. So, uh, wh- whoever was trying out the gun blew, uh, started shooting into the dumpster and all we saw was a guy in all white jump over a fence and he never showed up ever again back at the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Scared he was so bad. But, uh, yeah, it's it's got a lot of funny stuff in it, and uh, 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 it's got a lot of uh, uh, serious stuff, but uh, a little bit of everything for uh, uh, Yeah, the uh, uh, the what uh, what an extra job, what a great extra job was. Uh, I had a friend of mine uh, that I went to school with, and he worked in the sheriff's office for a while, and then he he, uh, he went to work for, uh, for one of the uh, kings of Saudi Arabia's sister. And, uh, he worked for several sisters and he called me. He said, Hey, you want to, you want to work, uh, you want to come to Hawaii for two weeks, get paid 150 bucks a day. That was in like 1980. I said, heck yeah, dude. <laughs> they fly me out there and I'm, I'm working for this 16 year old p- uh, Prince Abdullah. And, uh, that, that, that was an experience. And the, a couple of days before I left, the, the kid used to come in my room every night and take uh, my pot out of Smith and Wesson pocket knife and he would, uh, whittle on this big, uh, bottle of cologne, had a wooden knob on it. He, he, uh, he whittle that, uh, wooden knob. And so I looked at the blade and it was ruined. And so I folded it up and I stuck it in his pocket. And he said, Tom, you'll give it to me. I said, yeah, man, you screw it up. Keep it. Sure. So he takes off his Rolex watch and gives it to me. And so, so I called my buddy that, that, uh, I said, Hey, I said, Abdullah, Prince Abdullah just gave me his Rolex. He says, well, you got to keep it because you can't give a gift back because it hurts their feelings. So I started looking for something else to give him. So I gave, I had a, a state of Texas belt buckle. So I gave him my belt buckle and then he gave me his boom box. <laughs> and so I said, I, I, I get back off the plane in Houston. Man, I got a Rolex on and a boom box. <laughs> 
<laughs> to my head. <laughs> and it was a, that's a funny chapter too, because man, that, that was. I hope they don't send a hit team after it. But I think I think they're that her that that side of the family has switched sides. Of you, the 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 last king is from another branch of the family. Wow. But that my, my my friend did that for oh for probably ten or fifteen years. It, it's it's a nerve it's the most nerve wracking job I've ever had because shit might be midnight and she'll she'll want to move to another hotel. So you got to pack up these uh, two. They have their they they're com, they call companions and uh, they they bring about two hundred about two hundred of them. So when you move. You got to get all the security. Uh, all the kids have a, a bodyguard, and then you have all these. Uh, uh, they're called uh, uh, companions, and so you got to move two hundred people, and, and then you got to leave your you got to leave all your stuff there, and then they hire somebody to pack up your stuff and move it to another. Uh, yeah, and, and you never know what 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 they're going to do. Or what, I don't care what time of day or night it is. Yeah, it was. It was it, it, unbelievable. Yeah, it, it's a, it's a, it's a good chapter actually. It's really good. it's interesting. To, to their lifestyle was like uh, unbelievable. Uh, money was then was it, like throw it around like you and I would a nickel or a dime. Like like the, the first day I got there, they wanted to go play soccer, so that we stop. We we take the bus and we stop at this this uh, sporting goods store and they bought out the, the poor guy almost and they played soccer for a couple hours and they took all the soccer balls and all the uniforms and all the shoes and just put them in the guard the trash can. Wow. I'm like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> just and crazy. Brand new stuff. Yeah. So, it's, uh, so, so can I say, why did you write the book? Like, what was the whole point? At the end of the day, when someone reads your book and, and that, what is it you want to... Uh, convey to them what do you hope they take away from your book well actually i didn't write it for i, I wrote it for my i've got six grandkids mm. and 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 uh uh none of my grandkids know what i did as a young man so i, I asked my purpose i put it on the per, first page of my book i said the book is is uh, i wrote this book so my grandkids will know what their papa did for a living when he was a young man but but the stories, the the, the special crimes bureau uh, is currently uh, they have in Harris County still is not the same. It, this 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 was this was a uh, uh, it, it, it's 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 a light. It's something that uh, it's, it tells stories that no one will ever heard about before and, and never again. It, it's it's. Uh, I, I didn't write it to, for uh, it. Actually, it, I wrote it for the people that I work with because we all had the same feel of the place. I mean, I, honestly, you know, you're going to think I'm joking, but I'm dead serious. When I went to work in the morning, I was ready to go. They didn't have to pay me. I loved that job. That was my life, and it, 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 I sacrificed a lot uh, of my ki- of my children's time and my and my wife now ex wife time and uh you know it was it was uh, uh the people that work there they felt the same way it was just a, a way of life and it's it's hard to it's hard to explain but when you read the book i think you'll see that if that's what the kind of cases we work on that was some fun stuff i mean uh i, I was i talked to uh in fact one of the one of the pro- prosecutors in the book ted wilson he's one of the smartest he's one of the smartest uh assistant DAs, he he still travels around the United States giving speeches on writing a search warrant. The guy was an expert at search search warrant. And, and my boss, uh, who who later became the district attorney, Johnny Holmes, you, you'll never find anybody smarter than him. Don Strickland, uh, I can there's so many I, I can name and, and uh, so many people I worked with and, and uh, then we, we, I would work an average from, uh, you know, we, I never worked less than 40 hours a week unless I, my vacation, but I, I, I'd normally work anywhere from 60 to 80 hours a week sometimes. 
I mean, we work weekends sometimes. Uh, for uh, some reason, a lot of our big cases ha- always happen on a Friday. And my, my partner, uh, Bobby Blaylock, who, who became chief b- before I did, uh, I, every Friday morning we used to share an office together. And uh, I said, well, it's Friday. I wonder what's going to happen today. And it's either going to be a shootout or a search warrant or an all-nighter or something. It, it, just, it was always on Friday. I almost named the book uh, Always on Friday, but that wasn't uh, that wasn't uh, too uh, sexy, so to speak. So, <laughs> in fact, I, I originally named the book Texas and Caroline because that's where our office was. We weren't in the courthouse with a regular DA's office. We were in a secluded uh, office building, and uh, and we were on the top floor and. Uh, uh, you had to be buzzed in, and yeah, it was a it, it, best job I ever had. Uh, so, I guess I wrote it for several purposes, but uh, it was uh, mostly I wanted, uh, uh, you know, like I said, I'd be talking to friends and I'd tell them these stories. They said, "No, that didn't happen." I said, "Yeah, it did. Man, if that if that's true, you need to write a book." And so, I did, and I I I. Uh, uh, I Took me. It didn't take me any time at all to write it, and I, I probably have enough for another book. And I don't think it'd be as good as this one, but I, I think this one is kind of hard to beat. These are there, there's a few that are pretty interesting, but uh, most of the most of the real very interesting ones I, 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 I've written about. But uh, yeah. uh, anyway, well, uh, I, mean, yeah. I didn't mean to keep. I didn't mean to no. keep I didn't mean to keep rambling. <laughs> <clears throat> no, no. Do you have a uh, website that people can come find you at for the book or yourself? Yeah, I do. It's uh, in fact, I need to pay the lady that wrote it. I owe her some money. It's, oh, right. uh, it's, a, it's uh, yeah. I'll sit, I've known her a long time. She 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 does she does my uh, she did my PI account uh, years ago, and uh, and in fact, she's an attorney and. Uh, and a, uh, a very good lady, uh, but it's uh, www.specialcrimesbook.com. Fantastic. So, uh, specialcrimesbook.com. So uh, we'll we'll put that on the uh, website as long as you're with your book too and everything, so people can get yep. one click and and get it. And uh, wow. It's been very interesting hearing the stories. Oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, the, yeah. And the, and the, the mo- one of the most uh, another interesting one. If you just got a second, I, and I won't, I won't. It's the uh, last. Uh, it's the ne- next last of the uh, cha- uh, next last chapters twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight. It's about a Supreme Court justice. Texas Texas Supreme Court justice and uh he went to the he went to prison and then he while he was in prison he plotted to kill me and uh and my boss and uh, and and Tom Kennedy the editor editor and uh and so we put an undercover hitman when he got out of prison and, and then he decided that well if he killed us right now they would, they would know who did it so he said he could uh, embezzle some money, or, uh, or knew how he could launder some money. So I got on a, 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 a DEA IRS task force, and he was our first case. And I got to arrest him for money laundering. And he went, and this time he went to federal prison. <laughs> and he's he's since died in uh, Florida. Been dead a few years. But his name was Donald B. Yarbrough. It was a pretty big deal, and. It was a pretty big deal in, in Houston and Texas at the time. That, that, that was a, a, a probably a, a one of my biggest cases as well. So yeah, it's really nice. Quite quite a life uh, being in law enforcement and uh, all the things you see and do and and go through. It's uh, wow, I will tell you, nothing like it. Oh, and I still get uh, yeah, I still I have my. Yeah, listen to this. I was I was uh, I was going to my Amazon yesterday to look at, to look at my book stats, and uh, I, I log in, and it, and it, and it, it said I'm locked out because of a suspicious activity. <laughs> so uh, 
I call this number it tells me to call, and they the, the guy explains to me, yeah, uh, what you need to do is you need to go to a store and buy a, a Google Play card for $100. And I said, are you, you think I'm stupid? I'm a ex-police officer. I just wrote a book in, in, in uh, Amazon, and, and you're telling me that you're the Amazon police? I said, go fight it, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm not stupid. You had to scam me. I'm the king of scammers. You're not. <laughs> I'm catch scammers. Well, anyway, I thought that was funny. Just send <laughs> send send your guys. money to me in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah, and I he gave me a he gave me a, a, a Washington D.C. number. And so I, I got on to, you can't call anybody at, uh, at, uh, Amazon. And so I, I sent, I, I, uh, I sent them a chat message and I said, Hey, I just gotta, get, you, you got somebody out there is posing as a, a, being Amazon. It's this phone number. You need to investigate it. And you get an automatic chat reply. And I said, screw it, man. You know, I guess they don't care. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, all sorts of stuff going on. I'll tell you. Uh, never oh ends. yeah, you know I got. I know I got. Uh, I got the old social security phone call this morning. Oh, this oh. is social security. Uh, yeah. uh, and there's some suspicious activity. I'm like, yeah, I hung up, man. Yeah. yeah know. But you know, people, people, older people sometimes answer those and they give them money. Yeah. They pay I know. money. I know. It's sad. Yeah, it really is actually. It's, it's, it's just terrible, but well, I'll tell you, it's been it's yeah. been great. I'm glad you could make it on, and uh, we really appreciate you being here. Um, our guest, oh, well, thank you for thank you for having me. Our guest today has been the one and only Kenny Rogers, not the singer, and his book is <laughs> Special Crimes: Memoirs of a DA Investigator. Thanks again for being here. Thanks, Kenny. Yeah, yeah, sure. You've been listening to the House of Mystery radio show. To find out more about our guests, hosts, or shows, go to www.houseofmystery.com. Show's over for now. Was it as good for you as it was for me? Well, yeah. good night. This has been a production of Something Weird Media. I'll be back.